indeed good to be here. Remember the, the prayer requests that have been brought to our attention? <clears throat> we are going to be in 1 Peter chapter 1 this morning. 1 Peter chapter 1. The trial of your faith is what I want to talk about this morning. The trial of your faith. And our text reading is going to be in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse number 3. Peter here, as he opens this letter, verses 1 and 2, he lets us know who this letter is to. And it's to the elect, right? To the elect. So what he says, it starts in verse number 3, is a great passage of scripture, by the way. 1 Peter 1 and 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. By the way, that word means a living hope. Right? A living hope. To an inheritance, he says, incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. That's that lively hope that's begotten in us right there, right? It's, it's wonderful that nothing in heaven decays. Right? Because everything on this earth decays. Right? I, as I, every day I wake up, it feels like my knee of cartilage is decayed just a little bit more. Right? So, or in my, and my shoulder cartilage is decayed just a little bit more. And I'm looking for a time to when nothing decays. Right? Nothing breaks down. Right? <laughs> Who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. And he goes on, he says, Wherein ye greatly rejoice, Though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations. Or he says, you are in distress through many different types of trials or temptations. He says that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Whom having not seen, ye love. And whom though now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Receiving the end of your faith. What, what's the end of our faith? The salvation of your souls. You know, we've, we're, those of us who accepted Jesus Christ as our Savior are saved. Right? But we've not yet reached the full salvation. Well, that's not even the right way to put it. Our full salvation will be when we are with the Lord Jesus Christ. Right? We're saved. Right? We have that inheritance. That 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 uh, that I've lost the word. The down payment. You know, the earnest of our inheritance. Man, it was such a wonderful thing. But I want to speak about this morning the trial of your faith. And our text verse is going to be verse seven. Through verse number 9, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than gold, that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found into the praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom, having not seen, ye love. I love that passage of Scripture. Right? Even though we haven't seen Jesus, we love Him. Right? It says, in whom, though now ye see Him not, yet believing, we believe. He says, and because of this, we rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. It reminds me of that, one, that wonderful song, joy unspeakable and full of glory. And then receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. With this, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Oh, most kind, gracious Heavenly Father, I pray that you'll just be with us at this time. I pray that you'll just forgive me where I have failed thee. 
Father, I pray that you'll just strengthen me at this time to proclaim your word in a way that is pleasing to you. I pray that you'll just give me the uh, mental clarity and that the Holy Spirit will just work in my life, Father, and I'll allow the Holy Spirit to speak through me. I pray, Father, that you'll be with the prayer request and a special prayer at this time for Sister Diane, Father, as she is in uh, a lot of pain. I pray that you'll just comfort her, that you'll strengthen her, Father, and that you'll just give her your peace. We lift up these prayer requests that have been brought uh, before you this morning. You know each one, and I pray that you'll just answer them according to your will. We pray for those that will hear your word this morning, and I pray that your word will touch their lives. And we know that uh, through the promise of your word, that your word does not return void. It will accomplish what you send your word to do. And I pray, Father, that your will be done in our lives, in your church, and in the lives of those hearing and those that are present. We give you the honor and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. The trial of your faith. You know, this is a, a subject that I've thought about many times, and I still do. You know, the trial. And I've tried to deal with my failure to fully grasp God's promises. Have you ever done that? Do you find yourself grappling with your inability to fully grasp the promises of God? God is such a wonderful God, right? And last week we talked about the thoughts and the ways of God being higher than our own. You know, His plans and His purposes are greater than our own. And sometimes His plans require us to go through hard times. Verse number 6 says, Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold, temptations the question then may be asked and has been asked why me Lord why do I go through trials you know why must I go through trials and manifold temptations the word better what by the way manifold temptation means diverse trials right? many trials different kinds of trials well our text verse number seven speaks about the testing of the genuineness of our faith. That's what trials of your faith mean. Testing the genuineness of your faith. True faith, by the way, you may say, why is it being tested? True faith cannot be destroyed. Think about that. True faith cannot be destroyed. Even though God is in the process of refining your faith. Our faith is like gold. It's much more precious than gold. Gold has to be refined, and when it's refined, it comes out more valuable, right? More precious. The same with our faith. When our faith is tried, it is very precious. You know, if we had our way, think about this. We would always choose the easy path, right? Because it's easy. We like easy. I like easy, and I don't like difficult. We would choose the easier path, even if the easier path is not the right path. And we have done that, by the way. You know, our lives are riddled with past moments where we have taken the easier path. You can look back on your life, you can see that. But I was reminded of something that I had saw. It's the cadet's prayer at the military academy. Part of the cadet's prayer is this, and it speaks a lot to me. Make us choose the harder right instead of the easier wrong. Make us choose the harder right instead of the easier wrong. And never be content with half truth when the whole truth can be won. We have the whole truth before us, right? And sometimes the whole truth requires us to go through some hard times in our life. The refining of our, our fire. Our, of the refining fire. And we have the whole truth of God in his word. And his word declares that the trial of our faith is more precious than the things that we value to be precious. And, and he used the example of gold. But we notice here, is gold eternal? No, gold perishes, right? Gold perishes. Even though we struggle with this concept of being trials, and, 
And we do know that trials are hard and no doubt it's even the strongest of God's people who would even dare to ask what David did in Psalm 26, verse number 2. Psalm 26, verse number 2. David asked God to prove him. Do you know what proving means? It means test. Test. God tells us to prove him. Right, and see if he will not pour out a blessing greater than you can receive. But in verse 2 of Psalm 26, David says, Examine me, O Lord. And prove me. Try my reins and my heart. You may say, well, why is that a courageous thing to ask? You know, why is that a courageous and, and, and great thing to ask? Because when God examines and tries our heart, he's going to get to the truth of it, right? It's going to be in truth. It's going to be hard. And it's going to hurt. Why is it going to hurt? Because the truth often hurts. Right? And if you're doing wrong, the truth of God will show you that you're doing wrong. And many times we just don't want to deal with that. Like in our lesson says this morning, many times we are comfortable with sin. Right? But we always have to remember this. And the reason I'm saying all that and as it relates to our trials, no growth can ever be achieved by maintaining the, stat, by, by maintaining the status quo. Right? No growth, no spiritual growth can ever be achieved by maintaining, where you're, maintaining right where you're at now. By not looking any further into the things of God. By not digging into the word of God and having the Holy Spirit direct the thoughts that you... You know, I've said it last week. I've read this Bible many times. But I don't know everything that's in this Bible. Right? I'm not able to take everything that's in this Bible right now. But I'm trying to grow. You know, in a, as, as you know, I've really gotten into fitness. right? And, and trying to be better. It's all I talk about. To the point that Christine, my wife thinks that I'm annoying. <laughs> but in fitness, there's a term that's called making gains. right? Strength gains. Getting stronger. Well, I was thinking yesterday that I want to make spiritual gains, right? I want to become stronger and greater and more focused in the things of God because the things of God are eternal. Well, just like when you're making strength gains, I'm telling you right now, it's not pleasant. You know, sometimes you leave that gym and your arms are just like jello. Your whole body is hurting. It requires some effort. And to make spiritual gains requires effort. It's going to take trial. But God promises to be with you in the trial. Because he never gives us anything more than we're able to bear. So we need to consider the challenge of Paul that he gave to the Corinthian church. In his second letter in 2 Corinthians chapter 13. As he was closing this letter, 2 Corinthians 13 and 5. He says, examine yourself, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how, that Christ, how Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates? What this means is, examine yourselves to see if your faith is genuine. Test yourselves. Surely you know that Jesus Christ is among you. If not, you have failed the test of genuine faith. We must know. We must know without a shadow of a doubt that we are His and that He is ours. You don't want to go through life thinking, well, maybe I'm saved. You know, maybe. You need to know for sure.
we read carefully to understand that we are to examine ourselves to see if we be in the faith. Not, not if we have faith. The faith that he's speaking here is the system of doctrines which he had been preaching, right? The faith. The, the same faith that we're told in Jude chapter, <laughs> Jude chapter 3. <laughs> I do that every single time. If you find Jude chapter 3, please let me know. <laughs> and get a new Bible. <laughs> Jude 3. We are to earnestly contend for the faith. right? The system of doctrine. The, what Jesus preached, right? The word of God. The faith. We're to examine ourselves to make sure that we are in the faith. The only way... I'm sorry, the only one that can be in this form of doctrine, the faith, are those who are truly born again. And so Paul called on them, on them to prove themselves and to, and so that they would not be reprobates. What, does anyone know what the term reprobate means? It means, it actually has two meanings. Depends which context you use it in. If you use it as a verb, it means disapproved of. And if you use it as an adjective, it means lost or abandoned. Reprobate, what he's saying here is, if you do not accept salvation by grace, you are reprobate. And how are you reprobate? Well, you're disapproved of by God, right? Because if you have trouble accepting the doctrine, the faith, as he's talking, examine yourself whether you be in the faith. If you have trouble accepting the faith, the doctrine, the system of doctrine, right? Then you are reprobate. That's what he said. Make sure you're not reprobate. Make sure that you're trusting in Jesus Christ. Because as the doctrine has laid it out, as the word of God has laid it out, only Jesus saves. Amen? Acts chapter 4, verse number 12. There's no other name whereby we must be saved than Jesus Christ. Right? And the word of God says that only Jesus saves. And how does he save? Through faith, right? By grace. Right? By grace, through faith. It all works together. Only Jesus saves by faith, which is solely based upon his grace and his mercy. Salvation has nothing to do with your worth before God. Right? If that was the case, then none of us would ever be saved. Right? Because we have that nature of Adam. That, that horrible sin nature of Adam. But God, by his grace, reaches down to mankind. Right? And it's so important to know that he is yours and you are his. Amen. And that no matter the trial, right, he is with you. So why is it so important to know that you're saved? Because if you're not saved and you're going through trials, you have no one to lean on. Right? You don't have anyone to lean on. And I need God to lean on. I have no problem admitting that I need God to lean on. I am not so proud in myself to think that I have this figured out. Because if life has shown me anything in my own personal life, I have absolutely nothing figured out. Just when I think I got everything under control, something's going to come along, right? That's going to make me realize, oh yeah, <laughs> I need you, Lord. I don't have this, you know? So the trial of your faith is precious. It's not wonderful, not great. I mean, I'm saying it's joyful. But what did, what did Peter tell us about trials? How are we, what's our mindset to be? He tells us in, in verse number, uh, uh, oops, that's the wrong Peter. I need the first Peter, not the second Peter. He says, ye greatly rejoice. Greatly rejoice. Because that trial is much more precious than gold. The thing that every child of God should understand is that faith that God has given provides great victory. That's why we can rejoice. 
because we have been promised great victory over the world and the things of the world. Not through our strength, but as we look in the Bible here in, in, in 1 John chapter 5, verse number 4. says for verse number four for whosoever is born of God overcometh the world and this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith who is he that overcometh the world but he that believeth that Jesus is the son of God so what this is meaning and saying is that because everyone who is begotten of God overcomes the world. And that is the victory that did overcome the world. Our faith. Right? Who is he? Who is he that is overcoming the world? It is he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. And the reason we can say that is because Jesus told his disciples in John 16, 33. says, these things I have spoken to you that ye might have peace. And then he goes on and says, in a world, in the world, ye shall have what? Tribulation. But be of good cheer. In other words, don't worry, be happy, right? Because I have overcome the world. Amen. And because Jesus has overcome the world, we can overcome the world through Jesus. In other words, the world does not have to overcome you. Right? Don't ever let Satan think that you have to be overcome by the world because you're in the world. Because Jesus has already won the victory. And I'm not saying that when we get in a trial, sometimes that we don't fall. And that we don't look to God. Because many times our, test our life testifies the fact that we have failed under trials and under tribulation. They're not always joyful that we, we see that mindset. But we, we, can be remembering, we can remember that Jesus has overcome the world. So no matter what I go through, we have the victory. You know, all day long, I, I sit by a window and I see emergency vehicles go by my window all day long, right? Ambulance, fire, the paramedics, the sheriff's department more than anything. <laughs> but every time they go by, and I got to thinking about this this week, somebody's life just changed when that siren goes by. But for a child of God, no matter what goes on in your life, your life on this earth may have changed, but we can count it all joy when we go through trials, even through trials of health. Because is not death a victory for the child of God? It is. We don't like to think about that many times. We're most, a lot of times people are scared of death. But for a child of God, it is a victory. Because I cannot see any downside of being with the Lord Jesus Christ. As opposed to this world. As I said before, you know, and, 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 and to be where things don't, our things are not corrupted. Right? Things are not corruptible. So we can overcome through Jesus. He says, how does he do this? He now overcomes the world so that we can understand as his people the hollowness and the worthlessness of the best that this world has to offer. You know, as children of God, I think we understand what Solomon meant when he said, vanity of vanities, all is vanity. In other words, what is the end of this life? You know, the things of this life, the material things, they decay, right? They, they go away. But what we're told is that in verse 4 of our text, that we have an inheritance that is incorruptible and undefiled and that fadeth not away. And God helps us to understand these things, that what we go through on this life is temporary. Right? It is temporal. That's why in verse 6 it says, for a season. 
That, that, that means temporary, just like the seasons come, the seasons go. When winter that we're currently in is going to be replaced by what we call spring, which basically is 100 degree weather. It's going to go from 40 to 100, right? And it's going to stay 100, but the rest of the country gets, gets this wonderful thing called seasons. And by the way, you may not have known any from California. There are four of them. Yeah. Spring, summer, fall, and winter. But what, the, what's, what my point is, <laughs> I don't know how I'll do this to myself. They temporary. Winter doesn't stay forever. So when it says that we go through trials for a season, there's going to become a time when we come out of it. And we're supposed to come, and we're, when we come out of it stronger than we went into it. Right? That's the purpose of trials. You know, we need, and what trials help us to understand, is to understand and enjoy the spiritual things of God. To get our mind off of the, the material things, Right? Because when you live in a carnal, light, carnal side of life, you cannot enjoy or understand the spiritual things of God. Because God is spirit, we're told, right? God is spirit. And in order to worship him, you must worship him in what? Spirit and in truth. So no matter how hard you try to define God into, into some kind of logical box, Right, so that you can understand him, you must realize that God cannot be fully understood by our minds. And I said last week, I am so thankful for that. So that when trials come, I know no matter what the trial is, that there is a greater purpose at work in my life than what I can see. I have faith in that. Right? I have hope in that. And I'm so thankful. What do trials do? Trials bring strength, right? And at the end of the matter, counts up as reward at the appearing of Jesus Christ. We find in verse number seven, that the trial of your faith being much more precious than gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise, honor, and glory when? at the appearing of Jesus Christ. You know, the difficulty of our nature is to understand how that a trial can be more precious than gold. Praise, honor, and glory. Those that suffer under a trial are re being refined like pure gold. And you may say, well, why do you believe that? It's simple. Faith. Faith. Many times as adults, just in general, with, with not just with the gospel, but in things in life, faith is one of those things that fade. Right? The, just, just think about when you were a child. How easy faith was for you. Right? You know, uh, my parents never told me about Santa Claus or any of that stuff because... Well, I was taught pretty early that Santa Claus didn't exist. <laughs> Nevertheless, I had faith in January that come December, there was going to be gifts under the tree. Right? I didn't see them. I just knew that they were going to be. Right? Faith is something as a child that we're told we're to have childlike faith. Faith that just believes. But as we get older, some, somewhere along the way, we, have, we get that mindset, well, show me. Prove it to me. Right? I need to see it before I'll believe it. Well, that's not faith. Right? That's seeing. But we have faith. I have faith that through the word of God, and not only just because of the word of God, because I have experienced this in my life, that trials have made me stronger. They have made my faith grow even stronger, right? Trials that some people don't recover from. 
You know, there are many people out there who lose a loved one, who lose a child, and they are never the same again. Their marriages crumble. It's happened countless times. But because of our faith in God, our marriage, mine and Christina, through the grace of God, has gotten stronger. Why? Because the trial that of my faith, and believe me, when my daughter passed away, oh, I was extremely angry with God. I went through some moments of, you know, I'm not going to serve you anymore if this is what you're going to do to me. Because I felt it was my fault, as most people do. You know, sometimes when bad things happen to us, we, we get that notion in ourselves. you know, what did I do wrong? Did I cause this? Am I being punished for this reason or for that reason? But when you get down into the heart of the Word of God, you start understanding God. You, you find that, that passage of Scripture in Romans chapter 8, verse number 28, that we, I think we know so well. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. You know what that tells me? Is that God has all things under control. Right? So that great tragedy is something that I had to put and give to God because God has all things under control. I could have just sat there and let that anger destroy me. Right? But what good would that have done? Absolutely nothing. So coming out of that, and I'm not really coming out of you don't you don't get over that, by the way. It's with you all the time. But I understand that God has a greater plan than I have, and I understand that it takes faith to please God. The Bible tells us that, by the way, Hebrews 11 and 6. It says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. You must believe that God can and will deliver you. And he will can, he will can. Words, I, words, I tell you, ooh, my, my nemesis, words. He will deliver God does not give you anything more than you're able to bear. He knows what you can bear. And sometimes there's that saying that, oh, I wish he didn't trust me so much. But we know that he will deliver. Because the trial, the testing of our faith to see if it's genuine is more precious than gold. And I cannot think of anything greater in this life than having Jesus as my Savior and knowing for certain that I am saved. You know what that does? Because that takes everything else in life and makes it, puts it right in its proper perspective. In the scope of eternity, I am safe in the arms of my Savior. Because, not because of me, but because of who He is. Because God so loved the world, right? He saved me. He saved you. And he offers salvation to all that accept. And so today, as we think about this, when we go through trials of our faith, how will we stand? Faith is something that we need. Remember the words of Peter in John 6, 69, he says to Jesus, And we believe and are sure that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And that's what you need to remember when you're going through any trial in your life. Right? Remember the purpose of it. It's refining. But remember that like Peter, you could say, We believe and are sure. I believe and am sure that Jesus is the Son of God. And that is faith. That's not faith that I possessed of my own. 
God gives us that faith. Faith provides a firm standing ground, right? Jesus made a powerful promise in, in his ministry that he says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And I'm, I'm still holding to that promise. Not only am I holding to it, he's demonstrated it in my life, right? Amen. That he is with me, right? That he will not leave me. And guess what that does? That trial, it strengthens your faith so that the next trial comes along, you, you just strengthen and continue to be strengthened. Amen. You know, faith, if it's never used, will dwindle. Anything that's not used and worked diminishes, right? Jesus made that promise. He says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will be with you to the end of the age or end of the world. And this promise that he made to his church and we are his church, right? We are his church. So it reminds me of a song as I think about all these things in the last couple of weeks, you know, I think about the promises of God. It reminds me of that wonderful song, Standing on the Promises. That's what we're doing. Standing on the promises of God. Because those promises are sure. So, as we bring this to a conclusion, I think what we can pray it, it, is to, Lord Jesus, increase our faith. But be careful if you, when you pray that prayer. That's like asking for patience. <laughs> By the way, patience is a good thing. Right? Trials build patience. So what are we to conclude about the trial of our faith as we get ready to bring this to a close? First, it is precious. Right? More precious than anything in this world that we hold valuable. Trials are never fun. Trials are never enjoyable. But they bring growth. Right? They bring spiritual growth. You know, much like I said earlier, much like when you go to the gym, you... By the way, how is muscle built? Do you know? It's by tearing the existing muscle that you have. Micro tears. Right? Breaking it down so that it builds more. It's a testing. So, the... The more muscle grows in its place, right? So trials of faith bring about more faith, right? Which leads us to our second conclusion that we find. This brings praise, honor, and glory to God. And at the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, we do not have anything to be ashamed of. Are you ready? For the coming of Jesus Christ. You know, as we see this world around us, the craziness that some of the things I'd never thought I would hear said are, are, are being said by people. I just, sometimes it seems to me that people are so clueless, you know, about the reality of life. But I won't get into that <clears throat> in this message. What I want to say though. And what, what brought me to even say that to begin with is I can see the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ at any moment. And we are told to be ready and to be watching. Are you ready? Do you have the faith in your life? Do you have Jesus Christ in your heart? If you're not, if you don't, you're disapproved of by God. Why? Because you're still under condemnation. Right? You know, when Jesus came, because Jesus came did not put mankind under condemnation. Right? As we're told in John chapter 3. Jesus came because we are already under condemnation. He came to rescue us from condemnation. And if you don't have Jesus Christ as your Savior, then you're still under condemnation. You're not under condemnation by me. I'm nobody, <laughs> but God, who sees all, that's it who you are under condemnation. But in the condemnation is the wrath of God abides on you, because you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He came to save the lost man. 
No one wants to admit that they're lost. You know? It's embarrassing to admit you're lost. Not just spiritually, but even as a man, you know? <laughs> Don't want to admit that you're lost. It's troubling. But think of the eternal consequences. And that's the key. Think of the eternal consequences of denying Jesus Christ. Life is greater than what you see today. Life is greater than your current situation. Because your current situation is going to change. And then the time is going to come when you will, if the Lord tarries, you will pass on from this earth. And then, where will you stand before God? Will you be at the judgment seat of Christ? Or will it be at the great white throne judgment? There's only two places that you can, you can go. There's only two places that you will stand before God. The great white throne judgment? Oh, you don't want to be at the great white throne judgment. You want to be at the judgment seat of Christ. Yeah. Where you're judged for reward. Right? Not for your soul. Because at the great white throne judgment, my friends... In Revelation chapter 20, those that are not found written in the book of life will be cast into the lake of fire. And that is the second death. Right. And so today, think of the eternal consequences of accepting or denying Jesus Christ. Because when it all comes down to it, the choice is yours it's not up to your parents it's not up to you know your children it's up to you you know it's a personal relationship a personal acceptance of Jesus Christ that leads to salvation not who you know right not who your your parents are not who your grandparents are it's about do you know Jesus Christ and as children of God that know Jesus Christ May we have an encouragement this week when we are faced with the trial because I'm going to tell you right now, I could pretty much, you know, say with confidence that some trial of your faith is going to happen to you this week. Count it as precious and look to Jesus Christ, right? As we have the song leader and the piano player come at this time, may God bless you with his word and I pray that you got something out of it that will encourage you through moments of trial and that if you are lost that will help you to realize that you are lost because in order to be saved you must first realize that you have a need you must first realize that you are undone before God and that only Jesus can save and as we stand and have a verse of some song may God bless you 309,